Jeremiah chapter 24. Now I want to start this chapter off for parents out there in warning of what words we use. And I want to ask you if you ever reference your child or any child of being naughty. I think there's even a, a song out there about some devil being little children being naughty or nice checking this list twice I said devil and I mean devil because when you read the Bible all the way through and you read the Bible you just don't pick up the chapter okay I read my three chapters I'm done for the day do you really read the Bible have you really changed your conduct in your words when you study the words of the Bible, you'll find things interesting. You find things, you know what? We are sinners more than we realize that we're sinners by our everyday conversation. And Jesus says in the book of Matthew that every idle word we will give an account. And we're going to look at a word in chapter 24. I remember hearing all the time growing up as a little boy, naughty. Not just me, but others. It says, Jeremiah 24, And the Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs. Now, you remember what kind of tree Jesus went up and sought fruit, and there was none, and he cursed it? Fig tree is a type of Israel in the Bible. Do you remember what kind of leaf Adam and Eve made their aprons. Now an apron is not something you just cover the little goody parts of a man and a woman, like the cartoon show, but the Bible said they made aprons. Fig leaf is a, the leaf is a type of self-righteousness. I can cover myself. Now, there are three fig harvests over in Israel. June, August, and November. The first figs are great delicacy. It's yummy. Isaiah 28, verse 4, Hosea 9, 10, and Micah 7, 1. But here God shows them there are two baskets of figs set before the temple of the Lord. The picture is Jeremiah is at the temple, and there are two baskets of figs sitting there. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters, the smiths, from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. So Nebuchadnezzar's already shown up. This is the second time that Nebuchadnezzar's come. He's taken away the king. He's taken away their sons. He's taken away the, the, the craftsmen of the land. The temple is still there. And Jeremiah sees two baskets of figs where the Lord is supposed to meet. And we're not told who brings these figs. It says before the temple of the Lord. It's not in the temple. It's before you come in. One basket had very good figs. Even like the figs that are first ripe, and those are the ones that are delicious. June. The other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. So the second basket has been sitting for a while, and they're naughty figs. You couldn't eat them. He knows when you've been naughty or nice. Well, this is like coming out of Jeremiah 24 to me. There's nice figs and there's naughty figs. Oh, my boys is being naughty. Let's stop right there. Let's end at the period and not go any further. But there are two baskets. One has good figs. They're the best figs. And they're... No. I don't want it. Throw them in the garbage. Throw them in the compost pile. Just get rid of them. You know, when Jesus came to the tree, there was no figs. It was the leaves. 
which I'm told I'm not very well in wisdom of fig trees on that, but it was not the time of fig, but it, it was becoming time of figs. That's what I'm told. But then said the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs. Good figs. Very good figs. Uh-oh. The evil. Very evil. They cannot be eaten. They are so evil. We'll run back to verse 2. Had very naughty figs which could not be eaten. They were so bad. That verse 3, that cannot be eaten, they are so evil. When you describe a child as being naughty, the Bible says you're calling them evil. The evil is the result of sin. Now, you expect your child to be blessed by the Lord when you put that kind of curse on them? I have never heard the word naughty growing up only but in reference to children. And that Santa Claus song, Naughty or Nice, what's the Bible say? It says evil. No good. Rotten. Yeah, I know. You're taking, you know, the kid's rotten. And that's not more what the Bible says. It says evil. Have you ever called a child or your child naughty? You need to repent and put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you just called them evil. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying. So Israel is divided among two classifications here. They are very delicious or they're very evil. Now take the mark is there are only two baskets, there are only two descriptions of figs. There's no mediocre fig. There's no lukewarm fig. Lukewarm figs or a lukewarm church makes God sick. You take the delicious figs and you devour them and eat them and enjoy them. Or you take the ones that are evil or naughty and you throw them away. Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive to Judah. So these are the ones that are already gone. They obeyed God. Jeremiah said, go with Babylon. Go with the army. When you go, I will establish you. If you stay in the land, I'm going to kill you. Whom I, whom I have sent out of this place in the land of Chaldean, for their good. Because God's going to destroy the land. He is sending them over to Babylon for protection and for chastisement. I will set my eyes upon them for good. And I will bring them again to this land in 70 years. And they will under Ezra and Nehemiah. And I will build them and not pull them down. I will plant them and not pluck them up. Like him to fig tree. The problem is when Jesus shows up to the fig tree that has been planted in the land, they have no fruit for him. They've got the fruit of scribes, they got the fruit of Phariseeism, they got the fruit of Sadduceeism, they got the fruit of Herodiasm, but they don't have the fruit of God. It's not what God expected. So he curses the tree. There were no good figs on that tree. And yet there were no evil figs on that tree. There was just no fruit at all. And Jesus, the creator that made the trees, knew full well that that tree was not the time. Why would he waste his time to walk up to a tree? He knew it wouldn't be the time for the fruit. And do what he did in front of the apostles and then curse it. And when they went in the temple, remember they walked in the temple? 
And they come back and, and Peter said, wow, look at that tree that you done. It's an illustration. Israel in Jeremiah's time are producing good figs and they're producing evil figs. The good figs are those that went to Babylon. The evil is the ones that remain and disobey God. God said, go to Babylon. And some say, no, we're going to stay. God said, don't eat of the fruit. All right, we'll eat the fruit. I will give them a heart to know me. Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah are men that God gave them the heart. Ezra searched the scriptures, diligently sought God in the word the Bible says. Nehemiah had a heart for the, for the land. That I am the Lord, and they shall be my people. And I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. More so the second advent. They came back with a whole heart under Ezra and Nehemiah, but then they drifted away again. And, and the big mess when Jesus was here, and now they're going again scattered throughout the whole world uh, and as the evil faith which cannot be eaten they are so evil that's the naughty figs verse 2 surely thus say the Lord so will I give Zedekiah the king of Judah and his princes and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land and them that dwell in the land of Egypt, uh oh, some are going back down to Egypt. Some even fought the Egyptian army for help. <coughs> God told them not to go back to Egypt. I will deliver them to be removed un into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach, and a proverb, a taunt, and a curse in all the places where I have driven them. So it's not just necessary death, but just you're going to live to be an example of rebelling against God and paying the fruit thereof. You're just going to rot yourself into your nothing. Now, I don't know when things rot, if they stink or anything like that, but any fruit that you just see rot, one of the things that gets on them is mildew. It's like, you just look at it, it's like, no. When you see any fruit that's rotten, your best interest say, no, don't take that. One bad apple ruins the whole bushel. You know, when you pick up a thing of grapes and one grape's got moldew on it, you know, you pick off that grape before you eat any other grape. Just a bad fruit will say, you know, that's that's got to go or I'm not going to buy it. When you go to the produce section of the grocery store, or you go to the farmer's market, or that you know, you, you 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 poke, you squeeze, you listen, you do all kinds of things to that whatever that fruit is that called for it, and the the color, the the what it looks like, to make sure you're getting a good piece of fruit. These these wicked, evil, naughty figs. It's just I can't eat them. And they are a representative of those people do not listen to God, do not obey God, and serve other gods and do the evil of their own hearts. Sometimes you get fruit like that, you pick it up and it squishes in your hand. Like, yeah. You can't do nothing with it. It's not like God can pick them up and put them back on the potter's wheel. I mean, just, ugh. They make more of a mess if you pick them up. Reproach and a proverb. I mean, they're just going to be joked. They're just going to be harassed. They're just going to be the, the, the target of insult. You're God's people? Yeah, really? Where's your temple now? Burnt. Destroyed. 
You guys sit upon Mount Zion, the hill of God, and where's your city? Gone. Hey, aren't you supposed to bring a lamb about this time to the temple? Yeah. Why can't you? Well, there's no temple. Who's the ruler of your nation? Oh, we have a... Uh, I forget what it's called now. He's not a king. I forget what they called it. Prime Minister, I think it is. I may be wrong. But who is the ruler of Israel today? No, no, it's not a king. You know, there are many priests in Jerusalem today, right now. And none of them are Levi. They don't even know who their high priest is. The high priest of Aaron. And you can find books. You know, America's not jokeful anymore laughing. You, you can go online. You can find pretty good-sized paperback books on jokes about Jews. And God said it's going to be. But they're God's people. And these Jews that are evil, vile, and they're, not, they're going to make the name of Jews just rotten. I will send the sword, war, and, and I will send the sword, the famine. Those of you that stay in the land, go ahead, try to make a living. Try to pick figs when there's, there's no water. No rain. Go ahead, try it. And the pestilence. All right, the fruit you do pick, try to eat it when it's got mold and goop on it. It's been diseased. Go ahead, try it. Among them. Till they be consumed off the land. So God's going to slowly by slowly get you. You stay in the land, God slowly going by slowly. going to get rid of you. You know, when you, we read Ezra and Nehemiah, we see, which is pretty much the same list, but there's some changes. We see two lists of Jews, groups of Jews that head off for the promised land, right? Where do you read in Ezra and Nehemiah a list of people that they met in Jerusalem that were Jews? You, you don't read anywhere in Ezra and Nehemiah. Yeah, we finally got to the land, we found the foundation, and we found these Jews sitting and waiting for us. No, you saw the Arabian, Sam Ballot, and all of them, and they're, they're, they're the enemy. They have moved into the land. Maybe 70 years took what time to get rid of the Jews that were in the land that stayed to die off like the 40 years in the wilderness of those that did not believe God. And I will send the sword, the famine, the pestilence among them till they be consumed off the land that I gave unto them and their fathers. Now isn't that a very harsh statement for the last verse of this chapter? Before we move on to 25. I gave this land to their fathers, but I'm going to consume them. I'm going to destroy them. I'm, I'm going to take them out of the land. I'm going to remove them or they're just going to die of disease, death, and sword sword and war and everything like that but I gave them the land even in their rebellion United Nations even in their 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 sinning against God the children of Ishmael even in their disobedience to the Word of God Roman Catholics even to what they have done against God Jehovah the world that land, you need to realize, are God's people. He is not done with them, churches in America. They are just being disciplined right now, but that land belongs to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ gave that land to his brethren, John chapter 1, the Jewish people. And the curse holds firm to August 24th of 2015. I will curse them that curse you. And I will bless them that bless you. All those missiles that get fired at Israel. All the, the shots that get fired at Israel. All the wars has been against Israel. Whoever has 
conspired against Israel, who has ever turned themselves against Israel, whoever has attacked themselves against Israel, are cursed and will be cursed. If America turns her back upon Israel, she will be cursed, just as like any other nation that has gone against Israel. And all your new newspapers will focus on one piece of land of all the world, and it will be Jerusalem. Because that's the only piece of land that everybody wants in the world, and that is the only piece of land that God speaks about, and that is the only piece of land that God has given to one group of people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ishmael was sent off. Moab and, and, and Lot's children were sent off. That land is no one else's but Israel. Right now they're being punished. Right now they're, they're scattered through all the world, around the whole globe. I don't know where, where there's not a Jew. But God says, I'll bring them back from north, east, south, and west. I mean, you take north, east, you take south, west, you take uh, west, southwest, you take northwest. God will bring them back from all those directions. And you break that compass to 365 degrees, God will gather them all up and bring them to that one piece of land where the Lord Jesus Christ will be seated, seated upon the center of the whole earth. Where the throne of David was. And will be. Where David purchased a piece of land with the title deed recorded in the Bible where Solomon built the temple. Where Jesus Christ set his holy feet. Jesus Christ will be seated there. Realize one day, you know, and it never mentioned that Jesus ever went to the holy place or the most holy place. But one day he will be. But I'll tell you one thing about that most holy place. Jesus rent the curtain that we may get in. You know, it's never recorded that Jesus ever went that far into the temple, but boy, he he gave us access to into the temple. I wonder what priest walked into the holy place and said, oh, oh, what is that? Remember, there's only one man that ever saw, if he ever saw that, that, that the Ark of the Covenant. And that was gone. There's only one priest that could enter into the oracle. Jesus provided the rip. You know, they talk about time travel. Now. The rip. Yeah. I don't need time travel. The rip that, that caused my salvation is the rip that was put in that veil that Jesus Christ gave me a way to go in the holy of all. And that land that's sitting right there is a land that belongs to the Jew. And yes, there are good Jews that give flavor to God. And there are evil Jews that make God sick. Just like the church age. 